Manuel Antonio Noriega died at the age of 83 following a surgery to remove a brain tumor. The former Panamanian ruler and military leader is well known for his tenuous relationship with the U.S., particularly after it came to light that he was narco-trafficking and receiving multi-million dollar kickbacks from the Colombian Medellin drug cartel. Born in 1934 in Panama City, Noriega spent over 20 years in various prisons around the world for drug trafficking, money laundering, and murdering political opponents. A graduate from the U.S. School of the Americas in Panama, he worked for the CIA from the late 1950s through the 80s. He was involved in a failed coup attempt in 1969, but rose up the military ranks, eventually becoming commander of the Panamanian Defense Forces in 1982. As a military commander, Noriega allowed U.S. forces to set up electronic listening posts in Panama. He let them use the country to send secret aid to pro-American forces in El Salvador and Nicaragua. But he fell out with Washington after he voided the Panama's election results in 1984, when he dismissed the nation's first directly elected president in 16 years, Nicolas Ardito Barletta. In February 1988, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration indicted him on federal drug charges relating to cocaine trafficking and money laundering. The next year, Noriega nullified the results of a general election and had the opposition beaten. On December 15, 1989, the Noriega-controlled National Assembly declared the United States and Panama to be in a state of war. Five days later, then-U.S. President George H.W. Bush sent U.S. forces into Panama. General Noriega's reckless threats and attacks upon Americans in Panama created an imminent danger to the 35,000 American citizens in Panama. As president, I have no higher obligation than to safeguard the lives of American citizens. On December 20th, 27,000 U.S. troops seized control of Panama City in Operation Just Cause. Noriega surrendered in January 1990 after holding up in the Vatican Embassy, unable to withstand an assault of loud rock music that Americans blasted at the mission night and day. After spending 20 years in a U.S. prison in Miami, and another year in French custody, Noriega returned to his homeland in December of 2011 in a wheelchair and was immediately imprisoned there. He'd been treated several times for respiratory issues and his brain tumor over the past few years.